Okay, so we are moving on with our program and we are uh, going to have Dr. Lara Bava talking about mapping your own adventure and opportunities for positive change and growth. She is our pediatric clinical psychologist here at Children's Hospital Los Angeles and we're honored that she is part of our program today. So um, I'm gonna help Dr. Salinas. So some of these things, we're gonna, we're gonna repeat over time, but hopefully you will take whatever you need to take, guys at home, and you as well. We're gonna use some of these players, Dr. Salina said, later to bring some of these messages that we're gonna discuss right now, okay? So, as Dr. Salina indicated, you're not alone. In terms of medical adherence, this is a problem that is also shared with chronic health across pediatric conditions. So if you could look at these numbers, we're looking at when uh, adherence is hard to measure and we need to do more of it. It's exciting to hear there are so many things going on to measure and to learn about it and to see if we can come up with better solutions. However, when they do measure, across the board we see that half of the people that participate are not following their treatment regime as indicated by the doctor. So that's a lot of people. If you see different conditions we have here, across chronic, pediatric chronic illness, 50%. Cancer, 33 to 60%. Asthma, diabetes, so completely different conditions, but we get the same number. Half of the people, or half of the adolescents, I would say, because most of them focus in adolescents. So what is it about adolescent time and adherence that is half of them do not follow medical treatment? And besides the um, sharing the difficulties with medical adherence, you have other things that are also common for pediatric chronic illness. We have disruption of developmental stages, particularly becoming independent, doing things independently is the big one. We'll see across the different developmental stages how that can be problematic. Also, you have a disruption of, you guys know these daily routines are hard attending school regularly, missing school due to prolonged hospitalizations or coming to medical appointments. It's not uncommon for children to get behind. It's hard to keep up with peers. It's hard to come back to school and talk about what you've been up to in the past two weeks. So that is very common across pediatric health conditions. Also, children get busier, hopefully, as they age. They have soccer practice or things, activities with their friends, and it's hard to fit treatment and medical appointments within a busy life schedule. Not uncommon, having sibling difficulties. We saw it on the play. These brothers love each other, brother and sister, but there are some difficulties there and some difficulties for mom to attend to both. And also parenting is as stressful as it is. Having a child with a chronic health condition can make it even a lot more stressful. So, but what is specific to CF that we know and medical adherence? Dr. Salinas indicated knowledge is an important factor, but we know that having a general knowledge about your condition does not help to improve adherence. Having a specific knowledge how this works for you at your age with your routines, that helps a lot better to improve adherence. We also see this issue of age. We have better adherence with age the research that Dr. Salina showed demonstrated that. Then we have lower adherence at the, at the grow in adolescence, which is at the lowest time, and then adherence tends to increase when they become adult. We suspect that something about that transfer, Dr. Salinas indicated, when, young, when children are younger, you tend to be fully in charge. But that passage, that transition of responsibility tends, tends to be problematic. And then we also know that as the medical treatment gets more complex, naturally it is difficult, more difficult to follow up and be adherent. So how did we get here, okay? From cute to not so cute, okay? <laughs> not cute for anybody, not for the teenager getting the comments and not for the parents. I don't think anybody's having a, hard, a good time there, okay? So I want you to reflect back, and why is this important? Because when you get to adolescence, 
many of the things that you're going through, the good and the bad, started way back then. So when you want to change them, you bet it's hard. So when you were, uh, the, you maybe don't remember, but your parents do, back in infancy and preschool age, do you remember the terrible twos? Terrible three, terrible four, I've been hearing, you know, that it keeps on getting, I don't know, <laughs> until what age. But it's all about my, I want to do it my way, I try. Um, the treatment, maybe they cannot do it their way, okay? But this is the main developmental task. Also, you start establishing routines or having difficulties with routine at very this young age. Feeding and eating can be complicated as it is. If you have a child with cystic fibrosis, it can be even more complicated. And then, because of all this is going on developmentally, you can have problems with doing the treatments early on, okay? Did, they have, did the child have choices? How did you navigate those difficulties? It's gonna set the stage. Whatever was done was done, that's okay, but it's never too late to start introducing change. And the child should start already at age, a very young age, learning about their condition, so it's easier for them to follow up. When you reflect back to school age, the main developmental task is getting out of the house to school, learning, making friends, learning to make friends. And this is when they start comparing themselves with peers. Okay, I'm shorter, I'm smaller, I go to the hospital, my friends do, do not go to the hospital, who do I tell, am I getting teased because of that, do people think I'm contagious, there's a lot that the children need to navigate at that time and you as parents need to learn how to address as well. And also, like I said before, they probably got busier and you're starting to have some difficulties adjusting to their routines again and the learning about the conditions should it continue and being adjusted to the age as well. So hopefully they learn more about their condition because that will prepare them to better answer as well and navigate the world outside your home. So adolescents, beautiful time. Who will agree with me? All of them watching, okay? It's a fun time for them. Sometimes for us, not so much. <laughs> but this is the main theme is you heard it, I'm not a child anymore. I can do this, don't treat me like a child. For teens, uh, it's very, very important that you figure out who am I, where do I belong. Um, you know, this is what the peers are very important. What do I stand for? What do I care? They are very interesting. And if you can remember, it's a time where you, when they explore, when you explore, Okay, and then you um, want to take chances. You believe change is possible. Extreme emotions, I care so much, I don't care at all, okay? And you parents have to navigate this. And they're very rewarding. I want it, I want it now. They play the, you play the video game, I'm gonna pass to the next level. Okay, very reward oriented. That's how their brain is functioning. Also, like I said, this is a time where they are really figuring out who they are, so they are very, you are very focused on yourself. They are very focused on yourself. It's hard for them, what needs do you have? Do you have needs? I mean, it's what I want and what I care for. That's, it's not they're trying to be mean, that's how they work right now, okay? And peers, parents, I'm sorry, you're not cool anymore. <laughs> Drop it, okay? Leave me at the corner of the school, I walk by myself, okay? But give me a ride. I don't want to deal with you, but give me a ride. Okay, don't tell me what to wear, but what is the red shirt? How come you didn't wash it? Okay, so it's all these transitioning. But we know, research says, that parents continue to be the most influential person in the teenager's life. So just hang in there, okay? Even though they say, I hate you, but I need you, okay? And also we can have, it's a rebellious time. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna push the limits all the way. Let's see how far I can go. Does it sound like a two-year-old sometimes? Well, they're pushing the limits again. So you have some experience with this. And I see some parents doing this, oh my God. <laughs> because you're going into it because you're there. But this can be a time of where medical adherence really drops because I'm gonna show you I'm not gonna do it your way. So this is the battleground, okay? So let's learn a little bit about biology. 
Here I introduce you the typical brain. This is a work in progress. It's developing. We adults need to remember this. Doctors, parents, we need to remember this. They have a center for rebellion. It's all about them. Sometimes they are try one personality, then they try it. But it looks like that. It's the same personality they are developing. Okay? Look at the memory for chores. Very small space, okay? <laughs> but the memory for Facebook and songs. How can you remember every song? Well, that matters to me, okay? <laughs> but did you take out the trash? Did you tell me that? Okay? And then sometimes, you know, they like you a lot. Sometimes you're not their favorites. All kidding apart, why does this matter? Biology exists. They want to try things. They think they're the center of the universe. They don't believe bad things are going to happen. You don't think anything is going to happen to you. That comes with the developmental stage. So this issue of long-term planning, the part of the brain that tells them, put the brakes, think of consequences, hold on, think of your options, that part is the frontal part. That is under development and now it's all taken by love and good feelings and I like this girl or boy. Okay, so when you go and preach, you're hitting that area. It's not going anywhere. So remember, okay? So now let's transition to, okay, what do we do with this? So these are some of the key elements that we're going to talk in detail. And some of them were already mentioned by Dr. Salinas. So we need to pay attention to developmental issues. That is overarching theme. Go ahead. OK, so about knowledge and understanding. We say um, general knowledge does not help you. Having knowledge about your condition helps you a lot more. Let's ask a teenager, you follow a simple direction by your doctor. Dr. Salinas said, take three pills a day. Well, let's think for a moment about that. How can you take three pills a day? Three at the same time at eight in the morning, two and one, 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 every one hour, three at night. No? So there's a lot of options. How about if your doctor meant take three pills a day every six hours with a meal? Well, busted. You're going to look like you didn't take them. You did, technically, you're being adherent. You took three pills a day. But if you didn't take it as indicated, then it's not going to look very good. So something simple can look very complicated. So that's why one suggestion is preparing in advance for visit. This is for teenagers watching. This is for you parents. You prepare, they prepare. Write down questions in advance. Do a little bit of homework. What got on the way? Okay. If you don't take breakfast and you are supposed to take a medicine with the breakfast, but your doctor doesn't know that, then that's a problem. Because maybe that medicine is going to upset your stomach and you need food. Okay? But they, they don't read your mind. During the visit, take notes. Nobody who remembers everything your doctor told you when you walk out of the visit. Okay? Who remembers going to the grocery store and you remember everything without taking a list? You won't remember. Okay? So taking note what the doctor said and taking a moment to teach back. You guys, as doctors, need to do a better job in soliciting that information. So and the teenager is sitting there. What do you understand that you need to do? Tell me. Teach me. Especially when you introduce changes. Sometimes change is gradual. OK? So this helps a lot. And this one is for you, parents. You need to celebrate the small progress. If my friend Alex here you know, wasn't doing his treatment at all, and now he's doing it for 20 minutes, that's a small progress. But it matters. If we aim for perfection, then we miss those opportunities to say, hey, I noticed. Now you're doing 20 minutes. That's good. We're going in the right direction. Maybe tomorrow he can do 40. Okay? So it's, it's, hard, it's, it's hard to look at the small progress, but it's very easy to overlook that there is an effort in there, and that will take us in the positive direction. And also, if you say, well, that's it. Now you do it by yourself, OK? That's one way to do it. That's fine. You're frustrated, maybe. But you've been doing this job for a while, parents, managing all this. So you need to transition slowly out of your role 
you can't expect overnight for a teenager, and teenagers, you cannot expect overnight to think that you can manage it all. Okay, it needs to be a team effort. So if you would take one message, take this one, okay? Who sees a policeman and say, oh, I'm gonna go consult with him or her, okay? Maybe I was speeding, let me consult. No, you say, oops, rule, no? Uh, maybe I get a ticket, I don't know, we start checking. Okay, so don't be the policeman. You want transition, you know, no, don't make me look on your P.O. box, the mom said, no? Don't be the policeman, don't be the transition from enforcing to consultant, you know? Who doesn't want to have that moment where you're really having a good time with your kid and they come and say, hey, what do you think about this? I don't know how to problem solve this. Relationships and communication. Every literature about adherence says something about this, okay? These people seem like they're trying something. At least they're trying something. The guys with a the sign there say this helps him realize I'm being serious, okay? Mom is like, what are you doing, okay? So we all know, we hear, um, talking to you is hard. The, the children tell you talking to you is hard, and you tell to the children talking to you is hard. Okay, so let's put an example, a simple question again. What's going on? Tell your teenager that. Oh, no, 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 no. They are thinking, why are you asking me that? You know, and these are some of my favorite. You may get nothing. What are you thinking? What's going on? Nothing. I'm not going to say anything just in case, because maybe something I say, I didn't do right, okay? So why are you asking me that? So it's not simple anymore, okay? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know, okay? Well, maybe they don't know, or hmm, I'm going to take the fifth here. I'm not going to tell you a thing again, because, you know, I don't want to tell you. Maybe it's something that I really want to share with my friends. Stuff, this is one of my favorite, stuff, okay? What's going on? Stuff. Okay, dead conversation. You wouldn't understand. Parents have a hard time with this one, okay? Maybe we wouldn't understand for real, but we feel left out, no? What do you mean I wouldn't understand? I'm your parent. And, and then this is my favorite, putting, you know, answering a question with another question. What do you mean what am I thinking, okay? Again, this issue of, are you really asking me something else with that simple question? We, Dr. Serena talk about this neutral time, okay? Very, very hard to achieve because we have to be very conscious that we want to have this conversation. We almost want to schedule it. It's true. Think about it. Um, so you need to set time aside, especially if you have to negotiate these things of transferring information. We don't want to do it. This family was having a really hard time to how we're doing this. Everybody has some information, but it seems like nobody was really clear uh, what was this new pill and how we were going to take it. And Dr. Salinas said it, but I'm going to reiterate. Don't do it when you're busy. This mom was really busy. When you are upset, okay, it, you teens can be expert at pushing buttons. You know where your parents' buttons are, and you're going to go for it. See what I can do. Okay, let me see what you respond. So if you see, catch yourself, you're still the adult, and you have to set the tone. So if you're seeing that you're really getting irritated, that's not a good time to discuss the treatment. And you can say, you know what, we're going to take this. Give me a moment to recuperate. But if you see that your son or daughter is getting really upset, you know, time out. Let's calm down, and let's come back to it. Okay? And also, do not assume, why didn't you take your medicine? You didn't want to do it, why didn't you want to do it? And we go on this rampage. Why didn't you take your medicine? What's getting on the way? And wait for the response, okay? Don't assume, don't judge, and do not ambush your child. Okay, we're gonna talk right now. If, mm, that's not gonna get you very far. Routines, we talk about this. Why are routines so important? Routines make our life a lot easier and also take the choice away especially on things that we don't want to do. If you have a horrible boss, do you really want to go to work every day? Mm, maybe not, but you go to work anyhow. If you have a test, kids at home, you have a test, 
Maybe you don't want to go, but you go anyhow. So it's a routine. You go to school every day. You brush your teeth every day. You don't have to think about it. It's already built in your routine. Okay. When you keep it consistent, you have much more chances of keeping it up. It is already decided. I'm doing this. And you can negotiate the how and the when. How are you going to do your treatment? When are you going to do your treatment? So it's in the morning, the afternoon, you can, but not the are you going to do your treatment. Don't make things negotiable that are truly not negotiable. So watch out with that. But there's got to be some room. And this is when you involve the medical team as well. It's any, do we have any other option? And your teenager want to be involved in that too, okay? Asking questions, is this, do I have any leg room? Do I have any other thing that I can do that fits better my schedule? Appealing at, to interests and benefits. We're going to talk a little bit later about motivation. So I want to go to this soccer practice. That really matters to me. Doing the treatment, not so much. But if I feel better to go to my soccer practice, then that can be together, OK? We do the treatment, then, OK, you want to go do this activity with your friends. OK, these are, we, we talk about contracts. Let's set it out. What, make it a routine, and it's going to be easier, OK? And you have to keep siblings in mind as well in those routines somewhere. So let's talk about for a minute. Contracts is one way to have in limit setting and consequences. If you're the only parent at home or the only caregiver, this only applies to you. But if definitely there are two caregivers, you need to get on the same page. OK, mom told me that, told me that. Watch it, because maybe it is like that, and it makes it a lot confusing. So this guy is having a hard time because it says that his parent got on the same page about him. OK? So oops. I can't go, mom, let me, dad didn't, you know, put one pair against the other, OK? So what works? We already know what doesn't work. It was mentioned before. Uh, so parents, hang in there. Setting limits is really hard, especially with a child that answers back sometimes, OK? But we need limits, even if we don't like it. They're all around us, guys. So I'm sorry you're hearing this. I'm not advocating for your house to be the army, but we don't cross the street whenever we want. We have to follow the lights, okay? There are limits all around. Tell us how far we can go. And remember, teenagers, you're built to test the limits. So limits let them know, okay, how far can I go? What can I do? And also setting it ahead of time, it's much better. So what we know, the kind of parenting that works best when you set limits and consequences a parent that is warm, a parent that is involved but not over-involved, so leave some room there, some privacy, and consistency. If some, the, the teenager has to have, you have to give this to your child. They need to know what is coming at them so they can weigh their options, okay? Predictability is key. You set the limits. You provide the guidelines. This is what I'm willing to do. This is what I'm not willing. This is what I'm willing to give you. And make it predictable for them so they know and they can better choose. And the consequences definitely need to match the behavior. You're grounded for a month, OK? Because today you didn't take your pill. What if I don't take my pill tomorrow? Do I get grounded for two months? So think ahead of time. And again, you need to appeal to those things that interest. Think about the whole person. It's not only the treatment. What are, things, what are motivators for your child? What is, and they're going to be more willing to work with you. And then you have to follow through. Like Dr. Salina says, if this mom was saying, well, you're grounded, but um, how did that apply to you? She wasn't really clear. So you need to follow through. If you promise something positive, you need to follow through, very, very important. If you promise something negative, you need to follow through as well. And choose your battles. Teenage years are years to try things. So don't pick every battle. And focus on the entire person. Very big, these two are trying to share the responsibility about who broke the glass. Okay, hopefully, this is not you and your parents in the clinic. Why didn't you take your treatment? It was my mom and it was you. Okay, hopefully you're not sweating it. So another simple question. 
Did you do your homework? Did you do your treatment? Okay. Um, you can have all these possible answers. And there are variations, most of them, the teenager is not going to take the responsibility in this answer. So that tells you if we know who is in charge, who is supposed to do it, this is going to be easier. Okay, so you get these that are also designed to push your buttons. I forgot, uh, yeah, I did it, but you really know that they didn't, and they know that they didn't. Uh, they're going to throw you bone. I got to do homework now, so because you are a concerned parent about homework, you need to, um, you know, you're going to forget about what you ask, okay? So share responsibility. You start small and as early as possible. If you didn't start it um, earlier on on the school age years, that's okay. You can start now, but start small. Don't transfer everything. You need to monitor to ensure success. Okay, I taught you this, you do it. Okay, let me see how you do it. Let me see how you refill the peel box. Let me see how you uh, do a calendar. So you monitor first, and then when you feel, your child feels confident, and you feel confident, then you can transfer everything. Your child is most likely to follow through with whatever solution you come up, if he was part of the solution. Do it because I said so. It's not gonna get you very far. Do it because you have to. It's not going to get you very far. But if you and your child decided how to solve a problem, it's going to be easier for him or her to follow up. Okay? Your child is in the medical room. Doctors and you need to be, do a better job in, uh, in engaging them. Okay? And handle mistake appropriately. Don't take the responsibility away because they did it wrong. And communicate that you have trust in their abilities to do it better. And praise and reward. Don't forget, reward doesn't mean bribe, okay? I'm going to give you a dollar every time you take a medication. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about praise. We're talking about earn things that they, they matter to your child, okay? And a couple of words for motivation. You can do it today. And every day you have a chance to do it better. Every hour you have a chance to do it better. Morning treatment didn't work so well. Maybe afternoon does. So again, the child may need, you may, need, may not be motivated to do the treatment because, oh, I'm going to be a good kid. Uh, but maybe getting you off their back, it's a motivation for them. This is not me talking, okay? This is a teenager. Or, uh, okay, what is in there for me? I'm going to be more motivated again because I want to do something with my friends. A big motivation is you need help to do the things that really matter to you. Okay, like hanging out with your friends. And keep it person oriented. When you go and preach about the future, that doesn't count for them. It's what is in it for me now, today, tomorrow. Because that's how the teenage mind thinks. And then again, the whole person, not only the, um, the CF part. And earning trust can be a motivation as well. Because if you trust me, then we, we have to fight less about this. Okay, but it, trust is earned both ways, and do not aim for perfection. And I worry about the nine, like Dr. Salina said, if you see this total disengage, uh, that's a red flag for why is this child shut down? Why is this family shut down? In my professional opinion, I would look for mental health indicators. And when you thought they were ready, okay, this is a woman talking to the counselor to go away, and it says, I wanna go out of town so I can become a fully independent person but near enough so I can bring my laundry home. It's not done. They're going to bring the laundry, okay? So it's a journey. So three, a few words. Change is hard. Otherwise, we will do it all the time. Um, it takes time. It takes practice. It's not going to go in a straight line. You're going to have setbacks. But it's possible, and it's ongoing. We always can learn.